a year later, how much more confident are you with having your own group? And and that's never to disparage anybody, either players or management or coaches, but you've really got your stamp and it feels like you've got your people around you heading into the season and, and doing that with a lot of time uh, to maybe enjoy the summertime a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's still work to be done for sure. Yeah. But uh, yeah, we, we feel good about, I think, you know, not only the, we talked about the character of the, of the players that we've introduced to our group and, brought into our locker room, but um, look at, look at our coaching staff as well. And the type of people that we brought in there um, front office, Dave Poole and Rob DeMaio. Um, you know, that's to me, it's, that's a big part of it. I don't think that we could just solely focus on the players because there's so much work that's done around them. And I want, I want everybody to be proud to be a Senator and walk in with pride and put the team ahead of themselves. And that goes from, our training staff was incredible already, but also that was part of identifying coaching staff and front office scouts. Um, I think, you know, culture is a bit of an overused term, but the more people that you bring in with, with the same attitude and the same passion, um, you know, it really starts to unfold and I've had success doing this in the past at a different level. And, and, and that's the game plan. I think that, uh, we, we, we want people who want to be in Ottawa. We want people who want to be a senator. And uh, we, we want hugely competitive people that, uh, that have pride in the team. Hey, Steve, how were, you, how were you able to poach Matt Nickel away from his, like, that was a pretty, that was a pretty <laughs> big get because I know his business, what he does in the summer and works with like that. For people who don't know Matt Nickel, like he, he is, at least in my opinion, regarded as one of the smartest minds as far as strength conditioning and sports science goes. So was he, was he your guy when you played? He was, in fact, it goes way back where, uh, in 2001, I was rehabbing in Toronto. I came back, I was playing for the Oilers and I, uh, or sorry for the Atlanta Thrashers at the time, if anybody can remember that. <laughs> and I was, I was doing my rehab in Toronto and, uh, the gentleman who was working on me, asked where I was going to train and I still hadn't figured it out. He said, you should call this guy, Matt Nickel. And Matt <laughs> was a former football player and he was just sort of starting his business coming out of, coming out of school, getting a second master's degree. So uh, anyway, I, I met with him. We had a very brief conversation. He's kind of looking down on me a little bit because I was a hockey player. He's a football guy. He didn't even really know yeah. if he wanted to train me, but I became his first <laughs> NHL client. And okay. so that's how far back we go. And we've developed a great relationship and bond. And, uh, you know, uh, and I've just watched him continue to, to you know, grow as a in, in his field. And I would agree with you 100 percent. I've been around a lot of great people in this field, but none as good as Matt Nichols. So um, he was all on board because I think he knows my philosophy on things and he was, uh, he's eager to be part of our group and, and, uh, fully on board. So we're, we're really lucky to have him. You, from that staff, you do like from Jerry town and, and, uh, even John forget and Dom Nicoletta, like it's an amazing group of people that's assembled behind the scenes that people aren't real. Don't really, really don't really realize until you start to get to know them. Uh, I want to ask you a couple questions quickly. Mm -hmm. Do you, are you okay with the nickname steady, Steve? Yeah, but yeah, I'm I'm fine with it. I think actually, you know what? It's probably could describe my management style a little bit too now. Um, but no, that uh, that kind of took hold. I think in Edmonton when we were uh, we had uh, a pretty good run in the playoffs there in '06. So uh, I am good with that. Sure. Uh, I was at that Cup final covering uh, you, you guys as well. Also, that's that 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 was I guess the way you ran last year, if you will. You get the team late. There's not a lot you can do. Then the, obviously there's the change of GM and the change of coach throughout the year. People, and I know you, I'm sure you heard, we wanted change right away. They wanted drastic change, but there was no way you could do that and possibly build a successful long-term program. Was it hard to, to not say something like, Hey, just let me get through this. Let me sort <laughs> this all out. And then we'll get going here. Well, going back to, you know, I mean, my title and role was president of hockey operations. And really my goal over the first 12 to 24 months was to, you know, get to really the foundation of each area, each pillar of our organization and, and uh, make the necessary adjustments, changes, evaluations in each area to try and build it up the right way. And, um, you know, as 
as you know, as things unfolded and, you know, uh, you know, Michael decided to make the change at general manager. It sort of maybe, maybe slowed some things down in that regard. I feel like we're in a good spot now. We, we've gotten to that, but certainly my focus changed from, you know, sort of the, the overall organization to the day to day as well. So um, I think along with change, you have to be mindful. Like we, we, I've studied championship teams in the NHL and in other leagues as well, but, and there's not, not one way to get there, but I, one way not to get there is to get um, eager. And so I was very mindful of that. Um, you know, the one word you don't want to use in the Canadian market is patience. So you got, <laughs> you got to be mindful of, of that. But I think the fans will clearly understand that there's a, there's a plan here and, and we'll execute it at the appropriate time. And trade deadline was a good example. Like we, we worked our tails off to try and, you know, address some of the needs that we felt. And at that time in that market, it just, we weren't able to do it. And, you know, we come out of it a little bit disappointed, but, but very well prepared for the off season. You know, if we didn't take the approach we did as aggressively as we did at the deadline, uh, would we have been able to execute what we did in the off season? I don't think so. So there is a process to this. And, um, you know, again, the big mistakes are made when you get eager um, but I think we've done enough for sure to be able to add to this team so we can watch them take the next step. And again, from the players that we not only brought in, but the internal growth that I believe this group has, the new coaching staff, I think will make a, will make a big difference as well. Thanks for tuning in to Coming In Hot. If you enjoyed the show, hit that like button and be sure to subscribe to never miss an episode.